Knox Presbyterian Church, Rev. Mavis Curry, Sunday, July 30, 2023. Sermon title, All Sinners and All Saints. I'd like to welcome everyone uh, to worship a warm welcome on this uh, July Sunday. It's nice to be back. I got back a, a week ago. Uh, last Sunday, I was out at Burns Church in uh, Kilmartin Township, that area. Uh, they're looking for a minister right now, and so I was filling in for them uh, as their interim moderator. It was really nice because uh, Marianne, that's her home church, and she was there singing solos for us, so it felt like home, uh, home to me too. We had a great trip, and now you know I have the benefit of a screen, and I'm going to be boring you probably for a few weeks with photos <laughs> of uh, where we went and what we did. Uh, just a couple of announcements for you. Next Sunday is an ice cream Sunday. Yes, yes. which means um, it's a little bit shorter of a church service and we have ice cream cones after church. I need a couple people willing to scoop the ice cream and everything's provided. If you know you're coming next Sunday and you're able to be a scooper, uh, you can drop me a line or talk to me after church. We just need uh, a few people to help with that. Uh, today's online service is uh, donated by Peter and Shirley Cook, and we continue to be so grateful for these online donations. Uh, they make it possible for us to uh, share our service with people really across the country, and I know we regularly have people uh, from Manitoba that join us and British Columbia who join us, as well as just our own people who maybe are having a bad Sunday and can't... Uh, can't get out to in-person worship. So we're grateful to Peter and Shirley uh, this morning. Wanted to welcome Pat Baker to the piano. Poor Sandy has been sick as a dog. I heard last Sunday that we had, it, we were three men down, we had, or women down. We had, uh, our preacher was ill, Dennis Cook, and our organist was ill, and then the soloist was ill. So I haven't looked at that online service yet, but <laughs> I want to thank Catherine and, uh, and Pat Mithral, who played the piano, and um, I'm not quite sure if they even had a soloist. I think, I think they were barely treading water. It was one of those Sundays. So grateful to have Pat with us. Uh, Sandy's doing a lot better. He had to go on antibiotics. He was pretty ill. So uh, we're grateful to have Pat, who's a, a longtime part of our church family, uh, who's often busy at other churches, but we're grateful to have you with us today. Have a little bit of good news to share. Uh, we have a brand new baby member. It's not mine. <laughs> Although mine is coming soon because she's pretty uncomfortable. Uh, Brenda Dyson. Do you remember Brenda and Jamie Dyson? Brenda comes to church quite regularly with her wee fella Noah. And we probably all know the kids better than we know the adults. Uh, Noah is a chubby-faced little f toddler. Uh, Brenda is Allison uh, Nash, or Belle's sister, triplet sister. Putting everybody together, we know Brenda well. Brenda uh, delivered a healthy baby boy this week. Woo! Woo! Nine pounds, three ounces. Yeah. Hendrick Christopher Brian Dyson. And so we look forward to welcoming them back to church. If you're someone who likes to do quiet good deeds, we're going to just try to provide a little bit of food to Brenda and Jamie. Uh, he's already back to work, so she's managing a toddler and a newborn. Uh, so if you think, oh, I could make a casserole, just let me know and I'll slot in. I thought maybe just a couple of casseroles a week to get her over the, the hump <laughs> of the first few weeks of uh, having a newborn. Yeah, so, um, uh, you know, uh, Wednesday's coffees are starting back up. I know that we, I think some of you met while I was absent, but if it rains, we are not meeting. Uh, but this coming Wednesday, 1030 Pinafore Park, if you feel like bringing your own coffee and bringing our own lawn chair uh, to come for a visit at Pinafore. Um, we're grateful we have, uh, we're grateful to have Mary Ann singing with us today. Bill McPherson, who regularly sings at our, a lot of our services at long-term care homes and, and retirement homes, is here today as well. And he's going to lead us in uh, just a fun sort of prelude piece. We're going to join 
find them for the course, and the course is uh, is printed on the screen, and and oh, and Randy Mills is going to join them. We're, we're bringing in the big guns. <laughs> so so we'll ask them to come forward. The verses are great. It's very appropriate song for what we're talking about uh, today. It's come in, come in, and sit down. So. I'm sure they'll do something to say, come on, get us singing when it's our turn. Go ahead, guys. Oh, and Marianne, too. It's a trio. <laughs> walking but yesterday was a bit of a bust because anybody who woke up at 9 a.m. knows that it was pretty wet. Tisha came but we did not walk so the next one is at the end of July and if you're uh, in, end of August that's today end of August uh, if you're inclined to pray pray for a better day than we had yesterday. <laughs> Listen to these words inviting and calling us to worship. In our weakness and in our strength, we come to worship God this morning. In all of our faith and carrying all of our doubts, we come to sing our praise and speak our prayers. We are the family of God gathered, and God promises us to be here in our midst. Our first hymn is Shall We Gather at the River. I, I, it was written, I wanted to give you a little background because I found it interesting after this really sweltering hot week that we've had. It was written in 1864 by a Baptist pastor in Brooklyn, New York. And it was a hot and steamy July day. And the pastor, his name was Reverend Loudry, he was stretched out on one of those old-fashioned lounges. Can you picture that in his home? Long before air conditioning, he just would have had a little fan. And just imagine the heat in Brooklyn, New York. And it was on that day that he composed Shall We Gather at the River. So I thought an appropriate hymn for us to sing on a hot uh, July morning. Number 797 in our songbooks. Crystal time forever, flowing by the throne. 
please be seated. Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. God of grace, we do not gather for worship because we are saints, but because we are sinners. We do not come because we have faith all figured out, but because we have questions, and because we know we need your help. Holy One, bless each one who has come to meet you today. Surprise us with your presence and inspire us with your word. Our Father and our God, if we have come to worship today holding on to a grudge or nursing an old hurt, help us to set it down now. If we have come to worship focused only on ourselves, our needs, our wants, our worries. Turn our eyes in a new direction. If we have come to worship feeling weary or afraid, remind us again that you are a God who promises to be near us when we are in need. Lord, speak to us the words we need to hear this morning. For we pray in the name of Jesus, the one who taught us when we pray together to also say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends in Christ, hear and believe the good news of our faith. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and his only son into the world that all of us might live through him. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to our God. Our youth hymn is Walk With Me. It's sort of a newer hymn for us. It's printed uh, is in our bulletins. And we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3 before the children's time. Do you want to come up and help? 
it's, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fully do this children's time. I'm going to need help for this one. <laughs> I have been cleaning, Maria, I think you're growing. Do you want to sit? You don't have to stand. I need to tell you, um, I've been cleaning my basement out because we're doing a little bit of work in my basement and I have found many things that I should have got rid of long ago. That's what I realized, that sometimes I've put things in my basement because I wasn't really ready to get rid of it, and it stayed there for 10 years. <laughs> but one thing I found that I'm going to keep is... The Twister game. The Twister game. Have you ever played Twister? Oh, yeah, okay, so we're going to get it out. <laughs> Who doesn't love Twister? Oh, Luke, can you back up just a little bit? I don't want to cover you with the game. I no, this is beyond you. I, neither can I. Let's be honest. Okay, we stretch out the, the mat. The mat the board. Just like that. And then, when you play Twister, how many people here have played the game Twister? Oh, so there's more volunteers. <laughs> so, okay, you ready? Right hand red. Oh, right hand green. Okay, is it getting, oh, same hand. So is it getting hard or easy right now? Easy, great. Oh, right hand yellow. <laughs> hard or easy right now? Easy. Okay, left hand red. Left hand blue. Hard or easy? Easy. <coughs> left foot blue. Hard or easy? What was that? Easy. easy. <laughs> Deb is ready to come and try it. <laughs> right foot red. <laughs> Left hand green. Well, that now I think that was easy, right? Right foot red. It's already on it. Left foot yellow. You guys are really good at it. Left foot blue. Right hand red. Okay, you're do look at Warren, he's like a pretzel. <laughs> Left hand red. Okay, now, just stop for a minute. Just hold that position. <laughs> now, I want you to imagine that Deb came up and started doing it with you. Deb, I won't ask you to do it, but would you come forward? Yeah. Which one is Deb this morning? Here comes Deb. And then imagine if I was doing it with you and we were all crowded together. Would it get easier or would it get harder? It would get harder. Yeah, it would. And then eventually, it might be, there might be so many of us doing it, that how would, you, maybe it would be like if I'd said right hand green, what would you do? Right, yeah. And then what if I said left foot red? <laughs> yeah, it starts getting, and then what if I said right foot green? <laughs> yeah, Deb, you're a good sport, man. We're seeing, we're seeing a side of Deb we haven't seen before. <laughs> it starts getting harder and harder. Okay, now go sit in your chairs. I won't make you keep doing this. Yeah. <laughs> this is a great illustration for the children's story. Thank you. <laughs> Can you get up? Yeah, good. 
today we're reading two scriptures. One is the responsive reading, and the second is, is our scripture reading. And they're both passages that were written to this group of people called the Hebrews 2,000 years ago. Group of people called the Hebrews. And they were doing something hard. They were trying to be people of faith when most people didn't share their same faith. And there was a group of them trying to do it together, sort of like Deb and Warren. And they were trying to do it together, and oh, it was hard. And they were feeling discouraged. They were ready to sort of just, you know, lie down on the mat and say, game over. I'm done. And then this man named Paul wrote these words to them. So that's the context. That's what we're listening to when we listen to the Bible readings today. He's trying to say, look, I know this is hard. This is hard what you're doing, trying to live as people of faith in a world where most people don't have the same faith as you. And so he's trying to tell them, don't worry, you're not doing it alone. There's somebody who's going to help you when it gets tough. So thanks for coming forward. I'm going to ask Lucas to lead us in our children's time prayer. Luke? All right, but before I do that, I'm just gonna tell you guys that I could not have done that even if I could walk. <laughs> 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 Let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the blessing that is Pat Baker over at the piano this morning. Lord, as we, he as we hear your word this morning, let us think about the Twister game. For we pray in the name of Christ as we say, Amen. Amen. Thanks, Luke. Our responsive reading is printed in our bulletin. We read the part that is printed in bold, and it's, uh, it's the passage just before the scripture reading we're looking at today. Uh, it's uh, encouragement to God's people living in, trying to do something hard. So I'll invite Bill McPherson to lead us. By faith, we see the world called into an existence by God's word. By an act of faith, Abel brought a better sacrifice to God than Cain. It was what he believed, not what he brought, that made the difference. And by an act of faith, he must give death from By faith, Noah built a ship in the middle of dry land. By faith, Sarah gave birth to a child. By faith, Abraham, at the time of testing, offered Isaac back to God. By an act of faith, Isaac reached into the future as he blessed Jacob and Esau. By an act of faith, Jacob on his deathbed blessed each of Joseph's sons in turn, blessing them with God's blessing. By an act of faith, Joseph, while dying, prophesied the exodus of Israel and made arrangements for his own burial. By an act of faith, Moses' parents gave him away for three months after his birth. By faith, Moses, when grown, refused the privileges of the Egyptian royal house. By an act of faith, he kept the Passover feast. By an act of faith, the people of Israel walked through the Red Sea. By faith, the Israelites marched around the walls of Jericho for seven days, and the walls fell flat. By an act of faith, Rahab, the Jericho harlot, welcomed the spies and escaped the destruction that came on those who refused to trust God. We could go on and on. There are so many more. Through acts of faith, they toppled kingdoms, made justice work, took the promises for themselves. They were protected from lions, fires, and sword thrust, turned disadvantage to advantage, won battles, routed alien armies. Not one of these people, even though their lives of faith were exemplary, got their hands on what was promised. God had a better plan for us, that their faith and our faith would come together, together to make one completed whole. Their lives of faith were not complete apart from ours. That's sort of a summary of what is said in Hebrews 11. Then listen to these words from Hebrews chapter 12. 
Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarded its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. We thank God for this reading from his word. for Marianne. She also said she'd come and help help over at the screen for me today. I thought, oh, it's summer. Maybe it's a time for a little more informal of a message than a big long sermon for a change. So let's uh, join together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, may this message be in the name of the Father and for the sake of the Son and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I thought to begin uh, this morning, I'd show you some statistics. So here's a stat. This is from uh, um, StatsCan. Uh, I do this, I'm fortunate enough, about once or twice a year to help another church, different churches, uh, Presbyterian churches in Canada. Luke, are you okay? Okay, good. You got a tickle in your throat? Yeah, I want to make sure you're okay. Um, I've been looking at, uh, so one thing we do when we visit a church that's maybe struggling is to look at, at their community. And you can look at the statistics around uh, in Canada, but then you can actually look at the speci specific stats for that community. So I did this for Elgin County this past week because I was just interested. This is for Canada. Um, so 63.2% of the people, this was in 2019, 
um, identified as Christian. And then I don't know if you can see that in the back or not. 26.3 say they have no religion or secular perspectives. 1.2% other religious and spiritual traditions. 1.4 Sikh, 3.7 Muslim, 1% Jewish, 1.7 Hindu, 1.4 Buddhist. But what's interesting, when you look at that 63.2% that say they're Christian, um, they identify as Christian, but many of them are not practicing as Christian. So I'll, I'll just see if you can show me the next slide. So you can actually see religious affiliation and participation in religious activities has, has really sharply declined. I'm not telling you anything you don't know, right? We have watched sister churches close. Um, we know that it, it is hard for a church to bring in enough new members to just replace those who are dying. We know that uh, just, just by living our lives and going to church. And the statistics play it out. So you can say the red is declared having a religious affiliation. That has gone down. And then attended, and this is not just Christian, it's any religion, attended group religious activities at least once a month. And you can see how that's gone down. So people have uh, identify as Christian, but they're actually not uh, worshiping in a Christian community any longer. Um, so sort of sobering, and you might say, well, Mavis, geez, you got back from holidays. Debbie Downer. <laughs> no offense, Debbie. who <laughs> was a very good sport today, I thought. <laughs> um, I actually compared these stats to Elgin County. So all of Canada compared to Elgin County, very similar. Um, I thought maybe I would see a big difference, but not really. The, you know, little bit of variation in some of the other religions, but quite similar to who, uh, to who we are today. So I think that we actually have a lot in common with the people who first received that letter uh, to the Hebrews. Um, we, we might not know the persecution that those first readers knew, uh, but we know uh, what it is to live in a world where most people aren't here on a Sunday morning. They are doing other things. We know what that feels like. And I think we can identify with those first readers um, in that I think the temptation is to do two different things. It's tempting to give up, to just go, oh, you know, the church is, and, and we've probably said this to each other, it's just the way it is. The church is declining. I don't expect my church will be here. You know, I've heard that. I've heard that from people. I don't expect my church will be here uh, at the end of my life. Uh, that's tempting when you look at those stats and that down, downward curve. It's tempting to, to either give up or it's really tempting to long for the good old days. And, and that is what uh, God's people were doing that first received that letter to the Hebrews. Some of them were saying, I think we should just go back to what faith used to be like when we were uh, just didn't believe in Jesus. We were practicing Jewish people living in the land. Let's just go back to some of those old laws and rules. And that's who we will be. It's tempting when we have stats like this, when we're feeling like we're in the minority to either give up or to just start hearkening back to the good old days. So I, I want you to show the next picture just to get you all hearkening back. <laughs> Isn't that a great picture? That's the Knox Choir. Um, I'm thinking it was about 1953, 54, something like that. Um, the good old days, the minister was Harry Rodney, whose picture is uh, here in this hall. Uh, the church would have been full. On Sunday mornings, there was no sports. On Sunday mornings, you could not go to the mall or the grocery store. And most people did not travel, not the way we travel now. And so, and, and add to that, we lived in a society where duty was really important. And so 
uh, your responsibility to just show up, whether you were sick or not, you, you showed up. Now maybe, maybe it wasn't all the good old days <laughs> when we think about going through a COVID-19 pandemic. Maybe it's better that when we're sick, we don't show up to church. Um, tempting to either give up or to start just telling stories about the good old days. Um, and and it's really, that is exactly what was happening to the people who first uh, received that letter that we read this morning. So I want to show you the next picture. I, I did tell you that I would bore you with pictures from my holidays. There is Tom Curry on his bicycle, and I am the small person in the back pedaling hard to keep up with Tom Curry. <laughs> Uh, we actually rented bicycles twice. We rented bicycles in Dublin, and that's where that picture was taken. And then I'm completely diverting from the sermon, but we also rented bicycles in Hyde Park. And I need to tell you that at one point, we're, we're bicycling along in Hyde Park, and we're going right, along the, right near the street, and we see sirens, like we sort of see the flashing lights, and Tom says, I wonder what's going on over there. And we both look, and it was the king. <laughs> And so Tom said, look, he came out to see us. <laughs> then he was whizzed off to wherever he was going. But this was in Dublin, in this beautiful, beautiful park in Dublin. And, and we were, as you can see, on a, a bike path. Um, and Tom got the bright idea that he would pull out his brand new cell phone. He wanted to capture this moment. Now, I want you to think what I am saying <laughs> behind him as he's cycling looking at his camera. <laughs> okay, you just imagine what I was telling him. <laughs> because we know that when you start focusing on something nearby and you're riding a bike, driving a car, even walking, that is not a good thing to do. <laughs> Usually you end up crashing, right? And, and so Paul, he gives us this image of a race in today's, uh, in today's reading, that you are running a race. And he is saying there are a lot of distractions around you. You can look at those depressing statistics. You could go home and talk about them and worry about them and, and wring your hands about them. You, can, you could look at all of the worries in your life and every one of us, when we came to church this morning, brought a whole bag full of worries. Whether it's about our health, or about our families, um, whether it's about our jobs, whether it's about our kids. We all brought in a bag full of worries and we could just start walking and just looking at that bag of worries. We could just walk like that and look at that bag of worries. But what, what, what we read about in our lesson today is that if you wanna live a full and fulfilling life of faith, fix your eyes on Jesus. Turn your eyes away from the worries. Turn your eyes away from, all, from those depressing stats. Turn your eyes away from, you know, the person who really ticked you off at church last Sunday. So there probably was somebody that did, because we're the church, <laughs> right? We can focus on all of those things, but it will not make our race any easier. And in all likelihood, we will end up being diverted off course. So the, the first thing that we're told is we need to fix our eyes on the one we claim to follow. It will make the race easier to run. That's the first image that we're given. And then the second image that we're given is that all of these people, and Bill read that long reading so well for us today, all of these people of faith that have gone before, we need to listen to them because they are actually cheering us on. All of those biblical characters, uh, all of the people in faith who've lived before us, the people that we know, our Sunday school teachers, our parents, our grandparents, uh, that, that old man at church who always gave you a candy when you were a kid, all of those people who have gone before, they are actually cheering us on. And that is a powerful, powerful image. So I, I'm going to show you another picture from our holidays we finished up, uh, I did tell you, we had a great trip and I was gonna share a little bit of it with you. Um, this is Westminster Abbey. And my travel tip of the day is that uh, we had, I love going to, 
to church. I'm a minister. I love going to church, and I actually like visiting graveyards. Those are two things I really like doing when I'm on holidays. And it just happened this year when we traveled that we were on a train or, or on a plane on Sundays. So it just wasn't easy for us to get to a church on a Sunday morning. So I, I started Googling, and in London, I discovered that you can visit some of the great cathedrals uh, for a worship service midweek. And so we went to, we actually went to two churches, Westminster Abbey and St. Paul's Cathedral, while we were in London for something called Evensong. And if you're an Anglican, uh, you will know Evensong is an evening worship service that's mostly music. Uh, and uh, it's about 45 minutes long, and uh, we went to Wisman, and the tip of the day is if you're Presbyterian, you just, you get to take part in Evensong for an offering to the church. If you want to tour Westminster Abbey, they charge you. <laughs> so if you're Presbyterian and want to save a penny, <laughs> or you want to be very generous to a church, uh, try, uh, try doing that. So we went, uh, and we'd walked all over London all day long, Five o'clock, we show up at Westminster Abbey along with about 200, 250 other people and walked uh, right in to the very front of the church. And, and I need to tell you, it was, so it was so powerful that after we did it, we said, yeah, we, we need to go to St. Paul's uh, the next day. Uh, we wanted to do it again. Uh, one, the music was beautiful, but there is just something incredibly powerful about worshiping in a church that has that kind, that kind of history. I can't remember what my next slide is, but I think it's of the memorial slides. Yeah, so plaques. So what we found interesting, uh, what I found really interesting as we sat there uh, right before the service is that you are surrounded in Westminster Abbey by, by the saints. Like people are buried in that church. <laughs> And there are memorials, all the walls are memorials to them, either to people who are, whose bones are actually there or to people who have just gone before, but there's a plaque uh, for them. Um, and you can read through, there's royalty buried there, there's the bones of an unknown soldier, there's scientists buried there, there's poets and authors buried there. Um, and as you're worshiping, like I felt like you could almost hear them whispering those words of encouragement. It was like you were surrounded by the, you were reminded that you are bigger than your own life. You are a part of a, a movement called Christianity and they are cheering you on uh, in worship and in living. Um, it's really, really a powerful uh, experience uh, for Tom and I to just worship uh, with them. And I need to say, all of those people, all of those memorials, they, you know, none of them were perfect people. Uh, and some of them, you know, you can Google it when you go home and see the list of names of people who are, are buried in Westminster Abbey. They're saints and they're also sinners. Um, you know, they're people who tried to follow Jesus and they are people who failed. Uh, but they're there, uh, they're buried there, and it is a visual reminder when you worship there that those people are cheering, are cheering you on. So two things I want us to think about today, because we're going to go out and that bag of worries, uh, you know, we leave it here, but I can bet through the week as we go about our week, we pick things up and we put them back in the bag, don't we? Uh, we pick up a grudge, Somebody says something on the way out of church today and we're mad. We put that in our bag, <laughs> right? Or, or, or our spouse says something that just strikes us the wrong way and we put that in the bag. Or we have, uh, you know, our children call and give us a new worry for them. Or we have a doctor's appointment and that gives us a new worry. And we, we'll be carrying that bag again. And we can look at the bag we can look at the distractions, but we can also hear the words of Hebrews which say, just look at the life of Jesus. Can you live your life walking towards the life of Jesus? And can you listen to all those saints and sinners that have gone before? Can you remember their stories and their words of encouragement and can you hear them cheering you on in the race you are running? 
So I'm here for most of August. I think there's one Sunday I'm away, but I thought for the month of August, uh, we might listen to a few of the saints of the church. And as Presbyterians, we don't think of saints as, well, we think, look at your neighbor and you have met a saint. We are all saints and we're all sinners. Um, but as I was away, you know, I was reading about some of these uh, folk who lived a long time ago and folk who didn't live that long ago at all. And we can learn from them. We can hear their words. And so I thought with the help of a screen, we might be able together uh, to just listen to some of their words and some of their uh, words of encouragement. Uh, so we'll be look looking at St. Columba next Sunday. And we'll be looking at, and that's, uh, that's, that's one of the el oldest crosses uh, in Scotland on the Isle of Iona, um, where St. Columba actually went uh, to bring Christianity to Scotland. So we'll be learning a little bit about St. Columba, about John Wesley, about a, a woman that lived in the last century, uh, Corrie Ten Boom. If you're, if you're of Dutch ancestry, you will know that name. Uh, and, and then one more uh, Sunday where we'll look at another, a group of saints, modern day saints, uh, and see what we can learn together. So let us pray. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks uh, that we're not in this world alone. When we are challenged to do difficult things, you give us the example of Jesus and the words of encouragement of your saints. Help us to run with perseverance the race that is set before each one of us. For we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Well, it's time for a joke. <laughs> the preacher's sermon was on the Ten Commandments. And when the, the clergyman reached the, the commandment, thou shalt not steal, he looked out, I'm not going to make eye contact with anybody, but he looked out and he noticed that one member of his church was looking incredibly uncomfortable, you know, squirming in his seat, very agitated. The preacher carried on. And then he reached the commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. And suddenly this same man, he, he smiled, he looks more relaxed. And after the service, the preacher approached the man and he asked him for the reason why he was behaving so weirdly. You know, why when he said, thou shalt not steal, was he so uncomfortable? And then why did he just visibly, you know, let his shoulders down at the commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery? And the man, he replied with an embarrassed smile, when you talked about the commandment, thou shalt not steal, I suddenly discovered my umbrella was missing. <laughs> but when you said thou shalt not commit adultery, I remembered where I left it. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord loves a cheerful giver. The offering will be received. Holy words long preserved for our walk in this world. They resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Words of life, words of hope, give us strength, help us go. In this world, where'er we roam, Ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Holy words of our faith handed down. Sacrifice, oh, heed the faithful words of Christ. Holy words long preserved for our walk in this world. 
They resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Our prayers of the people today is a prayer that comes from the Isle of Iona. Uh, and so uh, let's join together in prayer. Let us pray. From deep within our being, we call upon you, God. For through you, all can be made whole. Hear us as we raise to heaven our concerns for the people of the earth. We pray for those who long for the healing that human hands alone cannot offer. We pray for those who suffer mental anguish who worry, feel anxiety, fear the future. We pray for those who mourn, who grieve the loss of love or of a loved one. And for those who know within themselves or see in others a loss of ability or agility, a loss of choice or independence or a dimming of the light. We pray for those who are near death or who fear death and for those who have made the last journey from life to greater life. In silence, we remember those who are victimized because of their race, their background, their history, because of their gender or their sexuality, because they are different. And for all who are abused, abandoned, or degraded. Loving Jesus, your hands are strong to hold and heal to wipe away tears and protect in danger. So hear all of our prayers. We ask these things for the good of your world and in your strong name. Amen. Our hymn is number 476, Amigos de Cristo, number 476. <laughs> Friends of the 
the grace of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest, remain, and abide with each of you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Thank you.